If you have any sort of interest in triathlon, then you most likely know of the mighty Jan Frodeno. You know, Olympic gold medalist, multiple Kona world champion, and most recently, winner of his matchup in the Collins Cup. In this video, we're gonna look at Jan's nutrition plan for the race and analyze it to see what we can learn. When I looked through his nutrition plan, I was pretty surprised. Actually, that's an understatement. I was genuinely amazed. If he took the nutrition on that he suggested, then I expect that's a big part of why he is just so good. And we'll delve into that in this video. If you're new here, by the way, then hey, I'm James. I'm a sport and exercise nutritionist with a focus primarily on triathlon. So I spend a lot of my time talking about those things. Let's get into it then, shall we? I saw Jan post up these photos as part of his analytics with one of his partners called Super Sapiens. Super Sapiens are a company who provide continuous glucose monitoring, or CGM, for athletes who want to try to fine tune their nutrition. Now let's have a look at the first photo that he's posted. Firstly, let's have a look at this glucose performance zone and this low intensity zone. This is based on information from his continuous glucose monitor, and it needs a bit of explanation. The Super Sapiens monitor measures your blood glucose on a continuous basis. And you may have heard me talk about this before, but if not, glucose is a basic form of carbohydrates and is one of the fuel sources that our muscles use to create energy. In fact, when we're doing any sort of moderate to intense exercise, it's what our cells prefer as an energy source and utilize it over others, like fat, for example. Now we have to maintain a reasonably narrow and stable level of glucose in our blood. And that's to ensure that all of our cells receive a sufficient supply of glucose and therefore energy to fuel them. That's in normal daily life and during exercise. Severe fluctuations of our blood glucose can cause problems. So think things like diabetics, although that's not the only possible thing that can cause blood sugar problems, but that's the one that most people will know about. But in relation to exercise and specifically what super sapiens are trying to target is that if you can keep your blood glucose at more of a stable level, then you'll be able to supply your working muscles with the carbohydrates it needs to be able to work harder for longer and perform at your best. What the super sapiens CGM is attempting to do is monitor your blood glucose and suggest when you might need to take more fuel on board. For example, if your blood glucose is dropping or whether your blood glucose is stable or perhaps rising, which suggests that you're fueling appropriately. Now this range is personal and it's calculated through the Super Sapiens app. You work out what blood glucose ranges you feel that you perform best at and then that's used to tailor a nutrition plan for you. In relation to Jan in this picture, his data suggests that going into the swim, he's in what you call this glucose performance zone here as in his blood glucose is in the range that he's previously found that he performs best at. And that's not surprising for someone who I suspect has completely fine tuned his nutrition. So that's the performance zone explained. Now let's look at his pre-swim nutrition. And that's one of these Martin gels and one of these drink mix 160s. And he's handily added it up for us, which is 64 grams of carbohydrates in total. This is a fairly typical, albeit on the high side, pre-race top up, but it just shows that he is topping up and he's preparing for some intense activity, which is important. So let's move on to this second picture here. This is his bike data. And let's first look at the zones here and then discuss his actual nutrition. You can see that during the swim, his monitor suggested that he was in his glucose performance zone 100% of the time but on the bike, he's only in it for 28% of the time. And for the rest of it, he's in what they call the low intensity zone for 72% of his bike leg. Now he may be purposely dropping off the intensity on the bike a little bit, and we're gonna talk about that more. By dropping off the intensity slightly, he's gonna be saving some energy for the run and allow himself to absorb more on the bike, because realistically, the bike is the best place to get your nutrition in. Remember that the harder you work, the less nutrition you're going to be able to absorb. And that's because when you work harder, there's less blood flow to the gut. So this might be a very conscious choice from Jan. Now that brings me onto his nutrition. And wow, this is what amazed me when I saw it. 
So he's added this up again for us. And he's got the two Martin Mix 320 calf, and he's got two Martin gels, and that comes to 208 grams of carbohydrates in total, which is 118 grams of carbohydrates per hour. Jeez. If this is true, and I suspect it is, then this will be partly why he is such a monster. Now, don't get me wrong, there will be plenty of other reasons why, but this will definitely play a part of it, and it's impressive. You may have heard me talk before about how many grams of carbohydrates we need when we race, and the recommendation for this type of event is usually something like 60 to 90 grams of carbohydrates per hour. If you are able to, and some people are, you can push it. Some individuals might be able to tolerate a little bit more, and others will only be able to tolerate about 40 grams of carbohydrates before they get some sort of stomach upset. In lab experiments for this sort of thing, you'll see that it's quite common for people to absorb somewhere around 60 grams of carbohydrates per hour. And you'll occasionally get outliers who can absorb maybe 100 grams of carbohydrates per hour. And very occasionally, you'll see perhaps one athlete or participant who can absorb up to about 120 grams of carbohydrates per hour. But that's rare. But this suggests, of course, <laughs> that Yan is one of those people who can absorb a lot of carbohydrates. Now this is incredibly important when it comes to racing, because it means that Yan can work harder for longer, and he's fueling incredibly well. When it comes to racing, carbs are king, and the more carbs the better. The more carbohydrates you can absorb, the less you have to use your own body's store of carbohydrates, which means there's a lower chance of you bonking or running out of energy. But not only that, you actually increase the amount of carbohydrates that your body is using or metabolizing, your carbohydrate oxidation rate, which again means that you can work harder because you're burning through more carbohydrates and releasing more energy to supply your muscles with fuel. So this will directly contribute to faster racing and performance if you can tolerate that amount of carbohydrates. And it seems like Yang can. As a side note, this is probably a combination of genetics and practice. He's been racing for so long that his body will be adapted to be able to absorb this level of carbohydrates and then be able to use them. And us mere mortals can get better at doing this ourselves as well. And if you're interested, I have done a video for this, which I've linked at the top of the screen for you. The last main thing to point out here is that he did use the 320 caffeine mixes. I've talked about the importance of caffeine before. It's a great thing to use before and during races to help improvement. Usually these are mixed with 500 mils of water, which suggests that he probably took on something like a liter of fluid as well, which will certainly be helping him because he's then staying hydrated. So with that in mind, let's move on to the next picture. So his glucose monitor, suggests that he was in this glucose performance zone for 100% of his run. And that means based on his predetermined levels, he's fueling his muscles with carbohydrates that's at a perfect rate for him. You'll also notice there is no suggestion of any nutrition here. And rather than him not putting his nutrition up, I expect this is just because he didn't take any in. He's already taken in fluid and carbs on the bike, and his run is only an hour long, which means anything he took in that hour wouldn't really get absorbed, so it's not really going to benefit his performance. So let's move on to the final picture. And this just about sums it up. As I said, I suspect he has purposely planned this strategy to allow him to work hard on the bike and then appropriately fuel up for his run and then totally smash it with the second fastest run split of that Collins Cup. Jan really is an incredible athlete, regardless of any data, but from what I can see, this just cements what I already thought about him. It also shows the importance of pacing and planning, preparing before your race and going into it with a plan and then executing it. This is genuinely textbook race nutrition, and I don't doubt that he actually did this. His last sentence here is interesting and I really hope he shows data for his long distance races and that we can analyze it because I think it would be great to see. 
So I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Jan's nutrition in the Collins Cup. It was great for me on a personal and professional level to see someone who is at the pinnacle of their sport following nutrition guidelines and executing it so well. But it is worth highlighting a couple of things here. Firstly, Jan is a beast, but we already know that. However, what works for Jan won't necessarily work for you. You need to practice your own race day nutrition well in advance and make sure that you can tolerate everything that you're trying. I'd hazard a guess that there are not many athletes who can tolerate Jan's sort of nutrition intake. So don't go copying Jan's plan and expect it to work for you because it probably won't. Secondly, is this a plug for Super Sapiens or Martin? Nope, it's not. I'm not affiliated or have any sort of links or association with either of them. And do I think that Jan benefited from his Super Sapiens technology and data in this race? Mm, truthfully, probably not. I wouldn't be surprised if Jan didn't even look at the Super Sapiens data or his blood glucose during that race and that actually this is just retrospective data which does happen to match up. So I suspect that data is just confirming what Jan already knew and that his nutrition plan was already well tailored before then rather than informing his race at the present time. However, I think Super Sapiens is a super exciting prospect and I'm gonna be doing a proper review on it in the future for you. But I don't think that you need to rush out and buy a CGM for yourself. If you're interested in some of the concepts that I've talked about in this video, then I've linked a playlist at the top of the screen for you. These are things like how to practice your race day nutrition, whether breakfast is actually important before a race, and how to train your gut to absorb more carbohydrates. If you haven't already, then I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up and subscribe and press that notification icon to stay up to date with all of the videos that I release. And remember that it is free to click subscribe. And with that, I will catch you next time. See ya.